I took the Czech language exam. Yeah. Then I passed! Oh my God. No, seriously, it was, first of all, it was seven hours. It was in librettes and Hansa came for moral support and he had to sit in the car for seven hours in the rain with Tobik while I took this terrible test. And then I found out about a month later and I honestly couldn't believe it. And so as soon as I told my family back home, they were like, congratulations, you're a Czech citizen. <laughs> I was like, oh, not, not even close. That was just like one thing I have to do. And some of my friends who aren't in the Czech Republic were like, oh, so you must be what, like C1, C2 level Czech? Like you're fluent now? <laughs> and I said, uh, it's B1 in a very difficult language. Anyway, I've gotten over what felt to me like the biggest hurdle in the Czech citizenship application process. But I haven't even applied yet. Like the Czech government doesn't even know I'm applying. All of you guys know, but I have not actually submitted any paperwork or made an appointment. Oh, there is paperwork. What more does the Czech government want? Well, first they wanna know that I've been living here legally for 10 years. And by the time I apply, probably next month, it will be 11 years, so we're good. Next, I have to prove to them that I was born, which is surprisingly difficult. To prove this, I needed to get my birth certificate apostilled and then translated into Czech. So apostille is a convention that um, means that when the government entity that issued you some document gives it an official stamp of approval, then every country in this apostille convention will recognize it. Because what does the Czech Republic know what a birth certificate in California looks like? Like I could Photoshop that. So to get it apostilled, I had to send my birth certificate to the Secretary of State in Sacramento, California with a $32 check. Now, checks aren't familiar with checks nor is anyone born after, you know, 1985. So we didn't have any checks. So we actually had to order a money order from the US Postal Service worth $32 and then get that in the mail and then send that back to America. After two months, the Secretary of State in California wrote me to tell me that my birth certificate had not been signed by the county registrar but by some like hospital staff, like <laughs> the janitor or something. So it was not valid. So I had to order a new birth certificate, which I can't do from abroad. So I had to get my mother to order me a new birth certificate signed by the correct county registrar. And then when she got that, send that to get apostilled in Sacramento. And then they would return it to her, which she then returned to me. And now it has to be translated into Czech. Next, if you're married, you have to prove it. And you do that with a marriage certificate. Just like the birth certificate, it needs to be apostilled and then translated. This is where it gets nuts. So first off, Hansa and I were married in Japan. And in order to get a marriage certificate apostilled, you have to first request a copy from the town hall where you were married, and then send that copy up to Tokyo where they will apostille it. And then they will send it back to you. The only problem is you have to be in Japan. They will not accept it from abroad and they will not send it abroad. So at this point, I'm literally looking at the cost of flights to Japan. Fortunately, my husband had a lovely ex-colleague who was willing to go and do this for us. So Hansa wrote him a power of attorney in Japanese. Hansa does not speak Japanese, but he's very good with the, with the Google Translate. And our friend requested the marriage certificate from the local town hall, sent it to Tokyo to get apostilled. They sent it back to him in the little, on the little island and then he sent it to us. So, Motohara-san, Otsukara Samadashita. Then we had to take that marriage certificate from Tokyo and have it translated from Japanese to Czech by one of the three people in the country who do that. Even though a university diploma is not required to be a, become a Czech citizen, if you have one or any graduate degrees, you have to produce your transcripts and your diplomas. So I have one from Charles University, a Czech institution, 
That was the last degree I got, so I'm hoping that they will accept that, but I might need to get the transcripts and the diplomas from my other two universities. That might be difficult. That might have to be apostilled. That could be a nightmare. We'll see how it goes. Speaking of studying, they want to know that you know everything you know to be a citizen. So first, you have to take the Realia exam. And I have many videos I'll post here about Hansa and I testing each other on these questions. So it's a 30 point multiple choice test in Czech um, based on a possibility of 300 questions. And there's a, there's a question database, so you can see all the questions. These cover Czech history, Czech society, Czech law, um, politics, things like that. So you have to pass that test, which I did last year, ching, done. Then you have to pass the B1 language exam, which is the one I talked about at the beginning of this video that was my greatest hurdle to this whole process. So this is reading in Czech, writing in Czech, listening in Czech, and speaking in Czech, all satisfying the level of B1, which is an intermediate level. Um, the part that I found the hardest was the speaking portion because I just get very nervous and I did luck out though. I think I told you before I was very concerned that I was going to be paired with like a Ukrainian or a Russian or another Slavic speaker that would be so much far further advanced in their check that I wouldn't be able to speak. They paired me with the proctor. So it was just me and, you know, Lubomir having a conversation. And I don't know if that was better or worse. I got very nervous about it. So real quick, this is the part I stumbled on. And if you don't want to hear about it, you can go to this next section. So I had to plan a party for our boss with the proctor in check. It seems easy enough, but I had been planning to, to a baby shower in check because that's what my friend had as her question a few months prior so i had all these like baby shower terms memorized and for some reason planning a party for our boss i just like i just froze up and i was like let's go to a restaurant and he's like well should we have entertainment and i was like i, I don't know do you play an instrument he's like the guitar i'm like bring the guitar and then he's like, should we have a program? I'm like, a program? We're adults, what are we? And he's like, well, what will we do? I'm like, we'll drink beer. Like, what do, what do people do at adult birthday parties? <laughs> and he was just trying to get me to like, move a little forward <laughs> in my, in my, you know, my vocabulary. But I was, this was the end of seven hours. And I was like, man, if I were the boss, I'd be like, let's go to the pub and drink beers. Like, I don't need like entertainment and party favors. <laughs> So that was where my speaking fell apart, but I think I'd done well enough in the two previous speaking parts that they let it slide. One woman was very sweet to me at the end. One of the judges, she like, she even spoke English to me at the end. And the other woman was like, she wouldn't even look me in the eye. And I was like, oh man, whoever has the stronger personality at that is where my fate lies. Next, they wanna know that you're not a criminal and this requires a criminal background check from your country. Getting a background check from the FBI in the United States would take like 10 to 14 weeks, I've read online. Like, it's a nightmare. Fortunately, I don't know if they do this for all nationalities, but for Americans, if you've been living here for 10 years, they figure like, well, you haven't done any crime in here, so you're probably fine. So they just let you sign a sworn statement that says, I'm not a criminal. I haven't committed any crimes for those like two weeks that I went home. <laughs> my, my criminal record's clear. Next, they want to see that you're contributing to the economy. So they want to see, you know, evidence of work. So if you're an employee, you would submit that employee contract. Now, I am a živnostnik. I'm a trade license holder. And so, you know, when I taught privately, I didn't make contracts with them. I have invoices. Um, and now, most of my income is like these little like online businesses like selling ebooks or like the YouTube channel or you know things like this and I don't have con I don't really have contracts not certainly not check contracts for those so I don't know what I'm gonna do about this I have to speak to a consultant about how to like satisfy this employment contract requirement it might just be that I submit my tax return so they see that like I've been earning money but answer pending Next, they want to prove that I have no debts to the social office, financial office, 
customs office, weirdly, um, insurance office. Uh, this you do by requesting um, from each of those offices proof that you have no debts, which seems fine. Problem is, you order those forms and they have 30 days to give them to you, but they must not be older than 30 days when you apply for your appointment, when you apply for citizenship. So like the timing of ordering these forms, if they're a little late or if I'm a little early, like you gotta get the timing right. Also, it's really weird. Sometimes you'll get a letter from the social office or the financial office saying that you owe like 13 crowns. I have no idea how. Everything I pay is automated. Like how is there this discrepancy? But 13 crowns, you know, the equivalent of like 65 cents or something, that's, that's an arrear. So you have to fix that and then request another form saying that you have no debt. So that's kind of the tricky bureaucratic part of this application. Next, there's an actual application form that you have to fill out when you get to your appointment, which is like this sneaky little secondary check language test because no one's gonna help you with it and you have to fill it on the spot. Fortunately, there are copies online. So I'm gonna take a look at that and see what the questions are. They're like, you know, mother's maiden name, siblings, that kind of thing. Um, who you're married to, just basic questionnaire. Lastly, they want something called a jivotopis. So that literally translates to like life letter. Um, it's been described as like a, a life CV, a life curriculum vitae, or for Americans, a life resume. And, and it's supposed to have kind of like a personal touch to it. Um, where you were born, what your family was like, what your earlier years were like, why did you move here? What are you doing here? Why did you decide to stay? What compelled you to apply for citizenship? And this is about a page and a half, written in check, um, shouldn't be a problem. And then, in this Givolta piece, you have to write all of the trips you've taken outside the Czech Republic since you first arrived. <laughs> so, in 2019, I did a video called, I went to 12 countries this year. And if you do the math on that, that's... 123 trips. I mean, this is not even talking about the fact that sometimes I go to Germany like three times in a month to go, you know, shopping or just on a day trip. I don't know that you have to mention the day trips, but you don't want to leave anything out. So I am literally going through like photo albums for dates. I'm going through my ticket stubs, um, my Facebook messages with friends to see like maybe they were on this trip. I feel like this is something they should tell you when you arrive so that you start making this list. And I can't even go through my passport like you could in the old days to see the stamps of where you'd been because in the Schengen zone, pretty much all of Europe almost, they don't stamp your passport when you cross a border anymore, which is great for travel, but it's really inconvenient for trying to <laughs> fill out a list of everywhere you've been. Once I've gathered all of these documents, I go to my local Urjad, which is right down the street, and make an appointment to apply. And here is the kicker. This is the true test of your ability to become a Czech citizen. Because from what I've heard, everybody's application process was a little different. Like some people required an apostille on their school transcripts and some people didn't. Um, some people were able to submit, you know, their tax documents and some people had to submit like invoices and proof of all the different jobs they had and contracts. Much like everything else that's ever done at a Czech bureaucratic office, it entirely depends on the lady or the gentleman who you have been assigned to. If they like you, they might make it easy on you. If they don't, you're in for it. That seems totally illogical to my like American brain, but that's the whole point. You're shedding your American self, your Colombian self, your South African self, and you're adopting the mentality of a Czech. And as a Czech, you know that the person in the Ujad is king and you have to respect that corner of the store and do what they ask. So I hope it will be a one one-time application and I won't have to supplement and bring more documents, but that's what happened to a lot of people I know. So, 
I appreciate everybody who in the past couple months wrote me in the comments to see if I'd passed the language exam. I wanted to, to tell you all at the same time. And as far as checking in to see if I've become a citizen yet, don't worry, I will tell you. For many of my friends, it has taken over a year to find out, even though in the law it says it only should take six months. But like I said, mentality of a Czech. Okay, so thanks for watching. Uvidíme se příště. Ahoj.